Hey gang, Troy Dean here from WP Elevation and I'm very, very excited to have you again here on Ye Old Facebook for another live stream. Uh, super, super excited to be here. Um, and wow, we, the engagement, <laughs> you guys are desperate for this spreadsheet. Before we even went live, there have been an astronomical uh, number of people requesting this spreadsheet before you even know what the spreadsheet is. So I'm uh, super excited to be here. I know that spreadsheets, a lot of people find spreadsheets incredibly boring, uh, but I tend to find uh, the right type of spreadsheet can be super, super sexy. And my job today is to try and make this a very sexy spreadsheet for you because I do know that it is the one spreadsheet that will help you uh, stay profitable and run a successful business from home. So uh, before we get started, I would love to know a little bit about you guys. Please let me know in the comments uh, which country you are from. Where are you from? Where are you watching this from? Tell me which country you're from in the comments so that I can get uh, an indication as to where you guys are. There's tons of people here. Um, uh, <laughs> Thomas Taggart says, I'll jump on board now with dozens of others, even though it says once the video is live, because I want it too. Uh, Matthew Delbridge says, also <laughs> laughing out loud at all the sheets. I know, it's hilarious. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment, but just comment um, in the comments. Let me know which country you are from. Carol Stambor is here. Hey, Carol, how are you doing? Uh, Patricia Mayer, Thomas Taggart, Yogis Sharma, Amy and Jacobs, John McLulick, Dawson Barber, uh, wow, Daryl Carey, uh, Naomi Lolly, Brendan Hedges, Michael Lawton, Michelle Lawton, sorry, uh, Claire McFadgen. Wow, lots of people here. Chad Sultana, same as yesterday. I'm here from Australia. Uh, Darren Sunken is here from Iowa in the United States. Giles Hughes is here from the UK. Georgia Butterfield from the United States. Tina is here from Brisbane. Keith Eldridge is here from Hiroshima in Japan. Awesome. Hey, Keith, hope you're well and keeping safe. Robert Mecklen is here from Virginia, USA. Claire McFadgen is here from Queensland. Yogesh is here from India. Deborah is here from the United States. Who doesn't love a sexy spreadsheet, says Angie Neal. Nancy Seeger is here from Fairfax in Virginia. Uh, Tina says, hey, Troy, hope you and the family are fit as fiddles, waving from Pandanus Beach in Queensland. Love it, love it, love it. Maureen uh, Chiaccio says, oh, sheet. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to say sheet just on its own to get the spreadsheet. We'll send it to you via Facebook Messenger. Roy Green, video paused again. What's with Facebook? Not sure, just refresh it. Gary Walker is here from Tasmania. Kyle is here from Trinidad and Tobago. Awesome. Alex Horrigan is here. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Simon Kelly's from Australia. Uh, Florence is here from Canada. Sharon Yates from Dallas, Texas. Awesome. Max Jeffcott from Australia. Michelle is here from Philippines. Head, head office. Michelle is our customer success manager in our office in Manila. Hi, Troy, live, live from Johannesburg, says Matt Vinu. Ida Center is here from Atlanta. Awesome. So without further ado, uh, you know what to do. If you want a copy of the spreadsheet that we're giving away in this video, just drop the word sheet in the comments and we will send you the spreadsheet via Facebook Messenger. That's right. We will send you the uh, spreadsheet via Facebook Messenger. It's a Google Sheet. So what you need to do is you need to go to File, Make a Copy, copy it into your own Google account, and then we can start playing with it. Please do not request access to edit my spreadsheet because I will just ignore you, okay? <laughs> Let me say that again. Please do not request access to edit my spreadsheet because I will ignore you. Please go to file, make a copy, and put it in your own Google account, and then you can play with it, okay? Um, Tina says, Kyle, I've been to Trinidad and Tobago, both beautiful, awesome. Uh, Roy says the chat is going, but the video is not. Just refresh your screen, Roy. Uh, Jesse is here from Texas. All right, cool, cool. Sh uh, Shemaine Wofford here from Oakland, California. Hey, Shemaine, how you doing? Good to see you again. Uh, Gabrielle is here from Mexico. Nev Harris from Pittsburgh. Awesome. And who else we got? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Loving the messenger automation, guys, says Angie Neal. Hey, I'm going to add that to the broadcast. Oh, it covers my face. That's a little bit high, isn't it? I might just bring that down a bit. I might just adjust our messages so that they come down there. Look at that. Perfect. Loving the messenger automation. Yes, it's doing a very good job. Uh, it's the quickest way for us to get the spreadsheet to you. Ray Maladoni is on the call. Hey, Ray, how you doing? Lots of people saying sheet in the chat. All right, so let me talk about a couple of different scenarios here, okay? 
I want to talk about the typical scenario when people start working with us uh, who are either freelancers or entrepreneurs or uh, small business owners, whatever you want to call yourself, you're working, typically working from home and you are offering services, creative services or business services or marketing services or consulting services to clients, okay? If you are watching this video and you are not in the business of offering creative or marketing services to other businesses, then you're probably in the wrong place, all right? Uh, this, these live streams are specifically for people who are either running their own business and they're in the business of offering services to other businesses. And so if you're an ice cream shop, you're probably in the wrong place, okay? Alex says, I'll tune into the recording. I'm building out a rock wall. Okay, no problem. Um, if you are in the business of, you know, selling lemonade or if you run an indoor mountain climbing center, you're probably in the wrong place. If you sell services to other businesses and those services are creative or marketing related or business consulting related, you're in the right place and this is for you. And what I wanna talk about is typically speaking, the scenario that where we meet most people looks something like this. Let me see if this works. Uh, they're typically doing somewhere between 70 and 100K a year in revenue. You're doing most of the work yourself. You're not paying yourself a salary. And at the end of the year, there's little or no profit left over, okay? If that, if that feels common to you, just give me a like on the page. If that feels like a familiar situation, just give me a like here on Facebook so I can get an indication as to who I'm talking to and where you guys are at. What we know though is that with a very, very few simple tweaks, this is the scenario that you can achieve quite easily. You can be doing over 250 grand a year in revenue. You're doing all the fun stuff and not doing the boring stuff. You're paying yourself a decent salary and there's over 100,000 profit at the end of the year after you've paid yourself a salary. If that is something that you would like more of, then please just give me a yes in the comments and we will dive into this spreadsheet and I'll walk you through the numbers and show you how this works. So just give me a yes in the comments if you would like to make a few tweaks in your business to expand your revenue and your profitability, be able to pay yourself a salary and have profit left over at the end of the year. Just give me a yes in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just gonna stand here and twiddle my thumbs and we won't dive into the spreadsheet. Just doing a little bit of thumb twiddling here. There we go, Yogesh, yes. Sean Michael Smith, yes, all right, beautiful. Uh, Robert Mecklen, yes. Charmaine Wofford, yes. Jesse Heredia, yes. Lots of lots of yeses. Hey, Ray Meladoni, woohoo! <laughs> Hell yes, Ray Meladoni. Finally got it working. Um, this is, by the way, Ray, this is Ecamm Live, just between you and me, with a few Final Cut Pro uh, templates thrown in for good measure. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, Jason Gray says yes, Jamie Hill says yes, Andre Ling says yes, Lee Daniel says yes, lots and lots of yeses. This is absolutely nut nutballs crazy. All right, let's dive in to the spreadsheet. First of all, let me just make sure I've got the right spreadsheet brought up. Oh, hang on, I haven't got the right one open. I need to open scenario one. Here we go, let me open scenario one. Now, there we go, there's scenario two, there's scenario three. Perfect, all right, cool, cool, cool. So... Uh, let me come back here and now let me dive into the spreadsheet and show you how it works. Let me just make sure I'm on the right sheet. I am there. Perfect. All right, let's dive into the spreadsheet. So this is a Google sheet. And as I said, please do not request edit access to this sheet because uh, you, I will not give it to you. Okay. Uh, you need to make a copy of this sheet and put it in your own Google account and then you can start editing. But what I want to do is I want to walk you through how it works. There are some tabs down the bottom. The first sheet that we're looking at is software expenses. And this is where you basically just list out all of the software that you use to run your business. Now I've given you some examples here to get you started. And yes, my spreadsheet goes from July 2020 through to June 2021. If I scroll across here, you can see it goes through to June 2021, and then it gives you totals. The reason is that the financial year in Australia rolls from the 1st of July to the 30th of June. I'm sure you all know how to change uh, column headers in Google Sheets. I'm not gonna walk you through that. So if the dates don't work for you, just change the dates. So what I've done here is I've given you some examples to get you started. Let's say that we use ClickUp Project Management. 
at 30 bucks a month. We use Calendly to book appointments at 15 bucks a month. We use Zoom, which costs us about 40 bucks a month. We've got a couple of emails in G Suite, so that costs us 30 bucks a month, and zero costs us $97 a month to do all our accounting. So you're paying $212 a month for the software to run your business, which is a total of two and a half thousand dollars a year. Okay, so that's the first sheet you need to fill in is just do an audit of all the software that you're using to run your business. And this is not software that you are using what for what for doing what we call is production. In other words, if you are using SEO Moz or you are using Ahrefs or you are using some other tool to actually produce work that clients are buying, then don't include that on this sheet. Just include the admin software that you're using to run your business, okay? So don't include any software that you're using to actually build projects for clients. The next sheet we wanna look at is the labor expenses. Now, let me walk you through this. What we're basically doing here is we're just factoring in and if, you, if it's just you or you have one other person working with you, uh, you can always just add rows here, okay? But what we wanna do is uh, we wanna give yourself a base salary, and I've just made some numbers up here for the sake of this exercise, right? But this is a fairly common scenario that we see when people join our programs and start working with us. Give yourself a base salary of $70,000 a year, and that will work out what it is monthly. Uh, then if you have other staff, so if you have a, a, an executive assistant or you have a project manager or you have someone else who is not working on projects for clients, if you have a developer or a designer who just builds stuff for clients or you have an SEO or you have a copywriter or you have a video editor that just work on client projects, don't put them on this sheet. I'll show you where to put them in a moment. All you wanna put here are people who work in the business who aren't working on projects. Now, the exception is you. If you're doing all of the work yourself, then just put your salary here, okay? If you're not paying yourself a salary, well, that's a problem. Leave it blank and we'll see how the numbers look. Uh, if you do have a VA who's doing some admin work for you, put their salary here. Uh, if you have someone else who's doing some work internally, like a bookkeeper, for example, you would put them here. Only if they're employees, if they are freelancers and contractors who, who just send you an invoice and you pay the invoice, don't put them here. I'll show you where to put them. What this sheet then does is it calculates your headcount based on the numbers that you have in here. So if you have, if this is blank, then there's nothing here, right? If I put, if I put an executive assistant here on, you know, say part-time at $25,000 a year, right? The headcount you'll see will go up and your numbers will change. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why that's important, but I'm just gonna delete that for now and leave it zero, okay? The reason that's important is because what this sheet also does is it calculates things like your 401k matching or superannuation if you're in Australia. And also if you pay any uh, leasing for laptops or software, say for example, Adobe Creative Cloud or any other software that employees use, you put that in here. What does that cost you per month per employee? And then these numbers will calculate by the headcount to work out these numbers here. So the, the point is if you only pay yourself then just put it there. If you've got anyone else who's actually on staff, put them in here. If they're freelancers and contractors, just ignore it, okay? So they are your labor expenses. Now let's go and have a look at your p and I'll come back to marketing and sales in a second. Let's have a look at your P&L now, okay? The p and this, this is where you're basically going to break down what you earn, what you spend, and we're gonna work out your margins. So this is, uh, I'll show you the revenue tab in a minute. This is just based on doing some basic project work with a little bit of recurring. Maybe you've got some low cost retainers built in. So this is uh, monthly revenue. And then we have some merchant fees. Uh, we've just calculated around about 3% for merchant fees. If you're collecting money through Stripe or PayPal, you're gonna be paying some percentages there. Uh, we also have um, hosting, storage and licenses. Now this is where you put in software that you use or hosting or any other licenses that you use for client projects. So if you're paying, you know, Ahrefs $97 a month or SEM Rush or, you know, all your theme and plugin licenses or any other software hosting or storage fees that are related to client projects, this is where you put it. Uh, then as we move down here, let me just move a couple of windows here. As we move down here, you've then got, it calculates your gross margin, which I'll come back to in a second. 
And then basically all of these gray cells are just dynamically populated from the software and the labor expenses tab. <clears throat> you wanna just put in here any office supplies, shipping or postage. And you also wanna put in down here any rent. If you work from home, you don't have any rent. Any miscellaneous expenses, accounting, insurance, uh, any educational coaching, travel, conferences, blah, 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 blah. Now here, miscellaneous expenses, this actually is where I would put uh, any, um, sorry, let me just leave that big purchases. If you were buying any new computers, this is where you would put it here, right? Now let's talk about the contractors or the freelancers, right? That the contractors or the freelancers that you use to actually work on client projects. Where do you put them? You would put them here under production fixed rate. Now, because this is scenario one, which I spoke about before, you're probably doing all the work yourself. So therefore you have no production or fixed rate costs because you're doing everything yourself. If you start outsourcing things, then you would punch those details in here, okay? The only other thing that you want to do is here, cash on hand, you want to add in this cell here, this amount here of $10,000. You want to change this to whatever the opening balance is in your bank account as of the 1st of July, 2020. And this will help you calculate your uh, cash on hand. Now let's go and have a quick look because I can see instantly we've got a problem here. We're actually losing money for three months, all right? So let's go and have a look at the marketing and sales tab and then I'll show you the magic tab, which is the overview profit and loss. So marketing and sales, what we've accounted for here is project work. So that is a client turns up and says, hey, I need you to write some copy for some sales pages or I need you to make a video or I need you to build me some landing pages or I need you to build me a funnel. It's transactional. There's no recurring revenue. You're just gonna build the thing for them and then they're gonna say goodbye, okay? So we have here project revenue. This is the number of clients or if they are repeat clients who are coming back for new projects, that's okay. This is really just the number of projects or the number of jobs that you're going to do in July. And then down the sheet here, we have the average project revenue. So I'm going to estimate that every time we do a project for a client, it's worth about $3,000 and we're gonna do two projects in July. That's how you calculate your projects, okay? So wherever it says project, number of new projects per month, and then the average price of those projects is gonna work out some calculations for you. Now let's talk about your recurring revenue. By the way, if you don't have recurring revenue, you're insane and you need to start building recurring revenue. I'm going to say that we started the financial year with three monthly recurring revenue clients for our low cost retainer product, okay? And our low cost retainer product is $150 a month. Whatever that is, doesn't matter. The details don't matter. Maybe it's an SEO plan, maybe it's some copywriting, maybe it's a care plan for their website, whatever, doesn't matter. But I'm gonna say most people who start working with us are kinda around this mark. They might have 450 bucks a month in recurring revenue, okay? And I'm going, to, I'm going to estimate that we're going to add two new clients a month on that, on that product. So at the end of this month, we're actually gonna have five total recurring revenue clients at $150 a month, gives us total recurring revenue of 750, plus the two projects at $3,000 we did, gives us $6,000 in revenue. So that's a total revenue of $6,750, okay, for that month. All you need to do is estimate how many new clients you're going to add to your recurring revenue product every month and how many projects you're going to do each month and then change the prices down here accordingly based on what you think you can reasonably and realistically sell, all right? Once you've done all this work, so let's just recap. You've put all your software here. That's not software that you use on client projects. It's just software that you use uh, for running the business. You've then gone through and worked out your salary and any other salaries that you have in the business. Then you've put in your marketing and sales projections, okay? What's gonna happen as a result of your sales and marketing activities right out to the end of the financial year, end of the 12 month period. Then you've gone in and filled in a couple of these blanks like how much is it costing us in freelancers and contractors, they go there. Uh, do we send hampers to clients when we sign them on? How much are our merchant fees? Um, what do we pay in licenses and software and, and plugins? And uh, any other expenses here, admin expenses to run the business, okay? Once you've done all that, you can come over to the overview profit and loss tab, and this will tell you at the end of 2021, if you keep heading in the direction that you are heading and nothing changes, this is what's going to happen. You're going to achieve 
are one hundred thousand eight hundred dollars in revenue. Okay, we haven't split out recurring there. I, I'll, I'll have a look at that later, and maybe we can add in the actual recurring there. Your total cost of goods sold is five thousand four hundred and twenty-four, and that comes from basically cost of goods sold is. What does it cost you to sell that stuff? All you've really got here is some Stripe fees or PayPal fees and your theme and plug-in licenses. You don't have any other cost of goods because you're doing all the work yourself. You're not hiring any freelancers. So your, your gross margin is 94%, which is ridiculously high, but you don't have any staff, so that's cool. Your total operating expenses are that because you're paying yourself a salary of $70,000 plus putting some away in your superannuation plus leasing a laptop, for example. So you've paid yourself 70 grand. You've got a net income, net profit left over of about nine grand or about 9% after you've paid yourself a salary, okay? That is a very typical scenario that we would see when people start joining us. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna walk you through some other scenarios. I want you to give me a yes in the comments if you want me to explain, is this working for you? Is this valuable? And would you like me to continue? Drop a yes in the comments. Is this valuable? Is it helping? Would you like me to continue? Drop a yes in the comments. Uh, and I'll go through and see uh, if anyone's freaking out here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Is it blurry for anyone else or do I need to get my eyes checked? <laughs> oh, sorry, Joan. It does depend on your internet connection. Um, okay, starting nutball tally. Yes, Annalise, we usually do have a nutball tally on these calls. I think my highest is seven or eight so far. Higher income, paying okay salary, but everything bespoke, feast or famine. Ben, Monk, stick around, my friend, because I'm going to show you uh, how to turn the lights on and the clouds will part and you will see the future. All right, uh, stick a yes in the comments. If this is helpful, is it useful? Would you like me to continue? Yes, 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 yes. All right, cool. Uh, come on, do you use profit first in business? Um, I don't, and there's a very good reason why, but it's a whole other conversation. Um, I, I kind of do, but uh, not the way that it's taught over there. And again, that's a whole other conversation, which I unfortunately can't have today. However, this is exactly what I wanted to start the new financial year with. Yes, Trish, awesome, very happy. Cool, let me do this. Let me show you a different scenario, okay? So let me come back to here and let's go to a new scenario. So what I've done here is I've added a couple of things into our software tab because our business is slightly bigger, okay? Our business is just a little bit bigger now. Um, all we've done really is increased, uh, we've just added active campaign. Let me just uh, zoom in here, here we go. We've just added active campaign at $97 a month because we've now collecting a little bit of a list and we're starting to do some email marketing, all right? Uh, so that's all we've done on the software tab. Let's go and look at the labor tab. We're paying ourselves. we're still just paying ourselves $70,000 a year, okay? But I wanna show you what this looks like. So nothing's changed on the labor tab, because what I'm gonna do here is I wanna pay you a minimum salary of 70 grand, but I wanna give you a lot of profit at the end of the year. Let's go and look at our P&L. So nothing's changed there really on the software. So this is the whole point of this exercise is we don't need to change a lot to get a very different outcome. Let's look at our P&L tab. Forget about the revenue for a second, don't get excited about that. But let's just, let's just have a look at this. Our production has now gone up to $1,000 in July because we've paid a freelancer or a contractor to help us with something. Then it's going up to 1,500. And by November, we're at $2,500 in, in recurring production costs. This is because in this scenario, we are using either a a handful of freelancers or, or, or contractors on a regular basis to help us, or we're using something like Floxy or Design Pickle or Deer Designer to help us do the thing, or we're using uh, a, an all-you-can-eat development service, or we're using a GoWP to help us with our maintenance plans, right? So we're outsourcing a fair bit, and that's a built-in cost into our production. And that's a good thing because it's reliable, we don't need to go find new freelancers whenever projects come up. We've actually got a team somewhere who are helping us on a regular basis. And the consistency of that team is what gives us the confidence to go and grow the business knowing that we can deliver on our promise, okay? So that's why this production cost has gone up. You'll also notice that your merchant fees have gone up because your revenue's gone up, which is a good thing. Hosting, storage, and licenses probably hasn't gone up because if you're using developer licenses of all your products or your software that you're using, 
you, you, your fees for that shouldn't really go up much because it's nominal. Even if you have to host a bunch more stuff, it's gonna cost you like 10 cents a month to host a new client. So what I wanna do now is just have a little look down here, right? I very cheekily factored in the fact that you're going to get some coaching over the next 12 months and it's gonna cost you a couple of grand a month to get that coaching. And of course, I would like that to be me who is your coach. But let me show you what the numbers look like. Uh, our cash on hand is a very different scenario. We're still starting with the same number. So I haven't said, all right, for this scenario, you need to tip in an extra 50 grand into the business to get started. We're still starting with 10 grand at the start of July. Nothing's changed there. You'll notice that the first three months are still pretty lean. We're not losing money. We're just making money, but then things start to change. What's been the real difference here? Let me show you on the marketing and sales tab. This has been the real difference. The first thing we've done is we have put up our pricing from three grand to five grand for an average project. And that's just a decision that you need to make. That's all it is, okay? It's not, uh, you know, I don't wanna hear anyone say, oh, well, you know, my clients won't pay me five grand, they'll only pay me three grand. That is baloney. I've been doing this for a long time and I've been coaching for over seven and a half years. The only difference between charging $3,000 for a project and $5,000 for a project is a decision in your mind. That's all it is, okay? So don't, I don't want anyone to be saying, oh, it's not realistic, right? I, because it is. I know it's realistic because I've seen it happen so many times, okay? The problem is at the moment is that a lot of people are stuck believing the myth that it can't happen. As soon as it happens, you realize that there's a new truth that you can believe. So uh, just, just hold off on the, um, on the limiting beliefs for now and just stay with me, okay? So all we've done is increase the average project revenue to $5,000. We've also uh, increased one additional client onto our low-cost retainer, which hasn't changed. We've only got $150 a month in our low-cost retainer. One additional client for July, August, and September. But here's what has changed. In October, we're not gonna sell that low-cost retainer anymore because it's not profitable. It's a waste of our time. It's actually holding the business back to do that. So we're gonna stop doing it. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to start selling a mid-cost retainer. We're gonna sell one of them in October and the mid-cost retainer is $9.97 a month. Again, I don't wanna hear anyone saying, oh, I can't sell anything for $9.97 a month. You probably can't at the moment because you haven't done it. And if you keep telling yourself you can't, then I guarantee you can't, okay? So just calm down on the limiting beliefs for now. I'll walk you through this in a second. All I'm doing is showing you the simple numbers required to get a very different outcome. So we've got a, a mid-cost retainer at 997. We've also got this signature system at $3,000 a month. Again, I have plenty of colleagues, ourselves, and clients selling retainers at $3,000 a month. So don't tell me it can't be done. It can, it's just a decision in your mind and the actions that you take to make it a reality. If you're not selling a signature system for $3,000 a month, chances are you don't have a signature system, you don't know how to sell it, and you're not having enough conversations with potential clients, okay? So that's the only change is we now have a mid-cost retainer at 997 and a signature system at 3,000. Look at this, I originally had the mid-cost retainer at 1997, and I decided to back that off to 997 to do you guys a favor. So I'm not even asking you to sell a mid-cost retainer at 1997. I'm suggesting that we can sell one a mid-cost retainer at 997, and we can start selling our signature system at three grand a month. The signature system, all it requires us to do is sell one a month for October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, and June. One a month, okay? By October, we sell one a month of the mid-cost retainer for October, November. We get our confidence up. We sell two in December. In January, things are quiet. So I've, 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 I've gone easy on you and said you just need to sell one in January. Then two in February, two in March, two in April, two in May, two in June. Totally realistic numbers. That's one a fortnight. It's half a week. It's two a month, however you want to slice and dice it. Look at this. No low-cost retainers by October. And look, check this out. One project in November, one project in December, one project in January, no project work as of February next year. If that's exciting to you, say yes in the comments. If the idea of not doing any bespoke project work and just working off recurring revenue is exciting to you, drop a yes in the comments. I'm gonna prove something to you in a moment. 
Drop a yes in the comments if the idea of doing no project work and just working off recurring revenue is exciting to you. Drop a yes in the comments because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly, okay? Give me a yes in the comments if the idea of not doing any project work and just working off recurring is exciting. Mona, yes, you can get a copy of this. Mona, just type the word sheet into the comments and we will give you a copy of the uh, the um, spreadsheet. Here we go, Mona, sheet. Drop the word sheet in the comments to get the spreadsheet. Now, I'm giving you uh, I'm giving you scenario two, I think. The actual spreadsheet that I'm looking at right now with the numbers is the spreadsheet that I'm giving you, okay? Yes, 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 yes. Lots of people saying, yes, just want to work off recurring, just want to work off, pro uh, don't want to do projects anymore, just want to work on, on uh, recurring. Let me ask you this question. If you can sell a project for a, well, I'm going to be really generous here and really easy on you, right? If you can sell a project for $1,500, Every month, if you can't sell a project for $1,500 every month, you're not in business, okay? Let's just talk about, let's just name the elephant in the room, right? If you can sell a project for $1,500 a month, every month, one project, you can sell a recurring revenue product for $1,500 a month, every month. The benefit of recurring revenue, though, is it's like compound interest. You sell a project this month for $1,500, you've got $1,500. Next month, you sell a project for $1,500, you've got $1,500. You sell a recurring product this month for $1,500 and one next month for $1,500, now you've got three grand. The following month, you've got four and a half a month. Then you've got six, then you've got seven and a half, okay? The mindset here is you can sell a $1,500 product to a client, but you can't sell a $1,500 retainer to a client. That's just a decision that you need to make in your head. Let me show you what the numbers look like. Let's go back to the spreadsheet for a second, right? And... We've done the marketing and sales. We've mapped this out. We've got a mid-cost retainer at 997. We've got a signature system at three grand a month. All we're doing is selling one mid-cost retainer a month, right? Then December we sell two, and then February next year we sell two a month. And our mid-cost retainer, our signature system from October, we just sell one a month. That's all we need to do. And by February, we're not doing any project work, so we don't need to actually do any projects, which means we've got more time to focus on selling the mid-cost retainer and the signature system. These months here are gonna get pretty busy. Let's talk about October, November, December, January. They're gonna be pretty busy months because you're still doing a bit of project work, right? Your, your revenue is 15 grand in October, your recurring is only five. But look at this, by February, all of your income is recurring. So these months here are gonna be very busy because you're still doing a bit of project work while you're dialing in your recurring. But check this out. We factored that in because we've got you some help. We've got you some freelancers or another team somewhere to give you some help, okay? What does that look like at the end of the year? Well, let's just go back here. You've pay, you're paying yourself $70,000 a year in a salary. Your P&L at the end of the year means you've done 277 grand a year. Your gross margin is 86% because your cost of goods is just a team of freelancers somewhere, right? Your total operating expenses are still really low because you're only paying yourself 70 grand. And uh, what else have you got in your total operating expenses that we've factored in? Oh, we factored in some coaching. There we go. Look at that. We factored in some coaching to help you get this dialed in. You're still making 127 grand profit plus you've paid yourself 70 grand. That's $197,000 a year in your pocket out of 277 in revenue just by making a couple of shifts, okay? Uh, let me come back here, answer some questions. Is this interesting? Drop the word sheet in the comments if you want to get the spreadsheet. Drop the word sheet in the comments if you want to get the spreadsheet. And please, share this with some people who you think might be interested, okay? Robert, the video will be here on Facebook forever, my friend. You can watch the replay of this video once the live has finished, right? Robert Mecklen, once, the, once this live video has finished, the replay will be here on Facebook forever. You can always come back and watch it, okay? A uh, couple of questions. Deborah's got a great question. What is the signature system? That's a great question, Deborah. I wish I could answer it on this call, but I don't have time, unfortunately. Otherwise, we'd be here for three months. The signature system is a unique process that you take your clients through to go from zero to hero, okay? 
Uh, there's a bit to unpack there, and I'd love to talk about that a bit more. Uh, stick around. Tomorrow and Friday, we're going to go live again. We'll talk a little bit more about Signature System, and then um, I'm happy to answer uh, more of your questions. Now, I want to ask this. Is this useful? Is it helpful? Do you want me to keep going? Drop a yes in the comments if this is helpful, if this is useful. If you want me to keep going, drop a yes in the comments. And uh, Omar says, what is the signature system? The video is down. Yep, again, I haven't exactly explained that because it's not the topic of this video. There's, I can go into more detail around signature system. If you stay with me over the next few live streams, I'll talk more about that. But a signature system is basically a process, a unique process that you take your clients through to go from zero to hero. And let me tell you something, you already have a signature system in your business. You just haven't packaged it up into a product. You're giving most of it away for free and just charging for the deliverables, right? So when a client calls you up and they start picking your brain, you're giving away your signature system for free and you're just charging for the deliverables. What I'm suggesting is the deliverables are a commodity. We know that because you can go to any marketplace online and get a website for 500 bucks or get copywriting for 300 bucks or get a video made for $99. The deliverables are a commodity. There's no value in that. The value is in your signature system, in your intellectual property, your knowledge and your experience. You've just got to package it up. Okay, <clears throat> um, Josh Cross, great question here. Are you transferring customers from the cheaper product to the mid-range when you stop selling the first one? Boom, absolutely, Josh, because existing customers already know, like, and trust us, and it's easier to upgrade them than it is to go find new clients. However, some of them won't be right, and you will have to let some of them go, and that's totally fine. Uh, Shemaine Wofford says, of course, Troy, keep going. Awesome, good, 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 good. Uh, all right, so I wanna give you one more scenario, okay? Uh, we can learn more about signature systems when we sign up for Digital Mavericks. Uh, yeah, kind of. Mavericks Club is really where we talk about, um, when we talk about signature system, Jay. Uh, happy to answer any questions in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group or here on the live stream. Uh, but w one of the things that we work with in our Mavericks Club with our Mavericks Club members is we work on, in fact, what we're working through right now and we've got a live event, an online live event coming up in the middle of June for two days where we are going deep and helping our, our Mavericks Club members develop and design their signature system. Check this out. If you can sell a $1,500 product, then you can sell a $1,500 recurring retainer. Exactly, it's just a decision. There's one other scenario I wanna walk you through in the spreadsheet, right? And I'm just doing this because I want you to know what's possible. Okay, scenario one, scenario two, uh, where's scenario three? Come on, where's scenario three? Here we go, thank you very much. Here is scenario three. I'm showing you this because I want you to know what's possible, okay? Here is the spreadsheet. Okay, you'll notice that our software costs have gone up a little bit. We're now paying 60 bucks a month for ClickUp because we've got more people working in the company. We're paying 60 bucks a month for G Suite because we've got more people working in the company, but they're the only changes we've made, all right? Active campaign still only costing us $97 a month. Our labor expenses, you'll also notice now that we're paying, you're paying yourself $100,000 a year in a salary, right? If you'd like $100,000 a year salary from your own company, hit like, right? If you'd like $100,000 a year salary from your own company, just click like. And please share this with people who you think will be interested, okay? Charmaine Wofford, how can we sign up for Mavericks? Charmaine, I will reach out to you after this call and we can have a conversation about it, okay? Uh, I know you, uh, you know me, we know each other, we've met, I'll reach out. <laughs> and we have actually met in real life at the GoDaddy office in San Francisco. I will reach out to you and we'll have a conversation about this uh, afterwards. Um, if you think uh, that someone would benefit from this, please share this with them, okay? So uh, click like, yes, you're all clicking like now. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so you'd like a $100,000 salary and you've got an executive assistant working for you part-time on $30,000 a year. Maybe they're working a couple of days a week or three days a week on 30 grand a year, okay? Because And they're helping you out. But here's the thing. We're only gonna introduce them in November. We're only gonna hire them in November because we know we can afford to, okay? Good work, Charmaine, love it. Um, we're only gonna hire an executive assistant in November because we know we can afford to, okay? But that does affect 401k matching that we need to put away. It also does affect our, our software and laptop costs because we've got another staff member that we need to pay for some stuff, okay? Uh, the other thing that's changed in our P&L is our merchant fees are going up because we're making more revenue, so our merchant fees are going up, so that's cool. Our hosting and storage and licenses, you'll notice, haven't gone up. 
because they don't need to, okay? Our uh, coaching is still there because you're a very smart cookie. You're still getting coaching from me to help you do this, which is awesome. Uh, that's the, they're the only things that have gone up. We lose a little bit of money here in October, which I can talk about in a moment. We're still only starting with 10 grand in the bank. So I'm not asking you to go and get another $100,000 to fund this, right? You can still start with the same bank balance. Let's have a look at our marketing and sales at what's changed. Our low cost retainer, first of all, our project revenue is still only five grand a project. I'm not asking you to sell $50,000 websites, okay? It's just $5,000 a project. Our low cost retainer is $150. Our mid cost retainer is $19.97, but I've backed it off to $9.97 again, okay, cool. And our signature system is three grand. So what's changed? Well, our low cost retainer, we still only sell three up until September. We don't do any project work after October. That's why we lose money in October. Let's go back and have a look at October. Okay, our P&L in October, look at that. We lose $1,200, which is okay because we've actually got the cash in the bank to do that. We actually go backwards in October, which is okay. It's all right to lose money if you're pivoting and we are pivoting and we've got the cash in the bank to do it. So that's cool. What happens then? In November, we start selling, oh, look at this. We're not selling any mid-cost retainer. We're just selling one signature system in July. It's now the 27th of May. I'm giving you the next three days, plus all of June, plus all of July. I'm giving you eight, just over eight weeks to make the mental shift that you need to make to sell one signature system for $3,000 a month. Then you do one in August. Then you do one in September. By now, you will know that it is possible and you will have a new belief system and a new truth that you can subscribe to. Your confidence will be high. You sell two in October and say no to project work forever, right? This is why you lose a little bit of money in October, but that's okay, because look what happens then. You sell two in November, that's one a fortnight. It's not even one a week. Two in December, two in January, three in February, three in March, three in April, three in May, three in June. I'm asking you to focus on one thing, selling your signature system for $3,000 a month and not even selling one a week, right? It's phone calls, it's emails, it's having lots of conversations. You're not having to deliver complex projects, so you don't have to work on a whole bunch of complex projects because that's being handled by these guys. These guys are now fulfilling whatever it is you're promising. And I promise you, what you're doing as part of your signature system is not building complex websites, okay? This is a slightly different business model, but you've got some help. So your time is spent business development, nurturing customer relationships, and focusing on one thing only, selling the signature system at $3,000 a month. What happens to our P&L if we make this mindset shift and we stay focused? You're paying yourself $100,000 a year. You've got an executive assistant on 30 grand a year to help you manage your calendar and your inbox and your scheduling. You're getting some coaching, right? It's costing you a couple of grand a month. Your revenue's 460 grand a year, right? Your gross margin's really high, which is fantastic. I could even back that down a bit to show you something a little more conservative. Your operating expense is 186 because you're paying yourself plus the executive assistant plus some other expenses. Your net income's 196. Plus you've already paid yourself 100 grand and you're making 196 grand profit. You might think that's unbelievable, right? Let's go and let's go and fix our let's go and do this in a way that means we don't we're not going to be losing money. Happy to lose money in October, right? Let's say we're going to introduce okay, let's say we're going to introduce our production fixed rate from August. We sell one of our signature system in July, we're gonna need some help in August to start delivering. I'm gonna turn that up to two and a half from there. So you've now got unlimited help with design, dev, uh, uh, unlimited help with design, dev, copywriting, whatever you need, unlimited support there for two and a half grand a month. Don't tell me it can't be done, it can. Uh, there's a bunch of services that you, you can use online to help you do this. Uh, and there's also a bunch of freelancers that you could you know, build out your own office if you wanted to and have a bunch of freelancers and contractors helping you do this. So let's increase your production rates there to get a more you know, 
so that your total cost of goods are higher here. You're still making 100 grand salary plus 190 profit. I mean, you've got so much fat here that you could really afford to increase this. You know, I mean, if you wanted to, you could take that up to four grand a month if you wanted to, right? I mean, let's just do this. Let's just extrapolate that out to the end of the year. Four grand a month in production costs. Now, what that means is you're going to lose a little bit of money over October, September, October, and November while we pivot. But you've got money in the bank to do that. Here's your cash on hand. You're never going to hit the wall. You've got a little bit of money to do that, to make that pivot. Your situation here, okay, this is more realistic. 77% gross and 37% net. They're good numbers. On 460 revenue, you're paying yourself $100,000 a year salary, and you've got 171 left over at the end of the year. That's $271,000 in your pocket as the business owner at the end of the year. What you could do, if you've got this business set up, you could replace yourself as the CEO, bring in someone to actually run the business for you and do all the sales, and you just kind of work a couple of hours a week on the processes and still pick up 171 profit and not actually work in the business, right? So is this interesting to you? Is this interesting? Uh, what I want to do is, let me just... Couple of things. If you want to get a copy of the spreadsheet, please drop the word sheet in the comments uh, and we will send you the copy of the spreadsheet via Facebook Messenger. You need to go to file, make a copy and put that in your own Google account and then start playing with the numbers. Trish Cooper, did you say you would talk about the signature system on Friday? Yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit about signature system on Friday. Um, I want to be completely transparent with you. If you want to get a signature system dialed into your business and you would like help setting up your signature system, you should reach out to us and have a conversation about the Mavericks Club, which is our mastermind for our high-performing clients who are in this situation and building signature systems and doing multiple six and seven figures a year in revenue. So if you want to have a conversation about that, uh, just reach out to me or email support at wpelevation.com with the subject line Maverick and we'll take it from there. Uh, if you want to just, if, if you're not quite there yet and you want to just get started, then stick around, get the spreadsheet, run the numbers, start playing with the numbers, dream up a new future for yourself, and then stick around tomorrow where we're going to talk to, um, uh, in fact, let me just give you a preview of what's coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to talk to Adam Silverman, who is based in the US, uh, and Samantha Johnston, who is also based in the US. She's in California. These two are not married, by the way. I know, the, I know the screen makes it look like these two are a couple, but they're not. How do these two run their businesses, it should say, without leaving the house? Adam Silverman has pivoted dramatically uh, during the pandemic and uh, has, uh, has, has done really well. Samantha Johnston is just absolutely killing it. Um, and they're going to be on tomorrow live. We're going to run through a case study on how these two run their businesses without leaving the house. Uh, they, I'm not going to pretend that they've got their signature systems dialed in and it's all perfect. It's not. They're still working through it, but we'll talk about how that's made a shift for them and a whole bunch of other stuff. So stick around for that. And then on Friday, I'm going to walk you through the entire matrix for winning clients. And part of that is your signature system. So drop the word sheet in the comments to get the spreadsheet. And uh, if you uh, want, if you would like me to continue, if this is interesting and valuable and you'd like me to continue, drop a yes in the comments and I'll hang around for a bit longer and take some questions. Um, so if you do have any questions, uh, what are your questions? If you do have any questions, just ask me in the uh, comments and I will bring your question up on the screen and then I will answer it. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Yes, Trish says, did you say you would talk about the signature system on Friday? The signature system on Friday. Yes, I'm going to talk about the signature system on Friday, Trish. I'm going to touch on it. I'm not going to go into uh, painstaking detail. It is part of the winning clients matrix that I'm going to be talking about on Friday. If you would like, which by the way, is a signet, it's one of my signature systems, the winning clients matrix. Um, if you would like to talk more about a signature system, reach out to us um, and have a conversation with us about uh, Maverick Slob. Sean Michael Smith says, yes, absolutely freaking lootly. Awesome. Unreal. So I'm happy to hang around. If you've got any questions, ask me in the comments and I'm happy to answer your questions uh, live here. The Maverick contact address again, uh, Bob, it is, uh, check out the comments or you can just email support at wpelevation.com. 
with the subject line Mavericks and we will take it from there. So just email uh, support uh, with the subject line Mavericks. There we go, now I can add that to the broadcast. Here we go, look. Email support at wpelevation.com with the subject line Mavericks and we can talk to you about Mavericks Club. Uh, boom, boom, boom. All right, will there be a replay for tomorrow's live stream for those who aren't available? Uh, Tamika, yes. So the beautiful thing about going live on Facebook is as soon as the live stream is finished, the video is still there on Facebook and we don't need to upload it or do anything fancy. It's just there. So you can watch this. Once I, once I hit stop and I end the broadcast, uh, you can then, and I go out and kiss my four and a half week old baby on the head, Goldie, uh, then you can watch it on Facebook because the recording will be here. Yeah? Charmaine, what a fantastic question. Charmaine, are you suggesting transitioning from production to coaching? What I'm, no, what I'm suggesting is that you transition what you sell from production to IP, right? Most of us do this. Most of us have knowledge in our head. I'm going to talk about uh, lead capture, right? So one of the examples I use all the time is what, what, what it turns out I just happen to be really good at lead capture and conversion rate optimization. And I love doing it for what I call um, organizations with a conscience. So I love working with people in the mental health space. I love working with nonprofits. I love working with people in kind of corporate wellness. And what I'm turn out, turns out that I'm really good at uh, helping them collect leads and do conversion rate optimization. So part of my signature system would be taking an existing website and just getting them more leads and more customers and more sales and more revenue through their existing website. I'm not interested in building websites. You might be, and that's great. I'm not interested in building websites for scratch. I'm interested in just pulling a few levers and making something that already exists high performing. So typically in that example, what you would do is you would have a conversation with a client you would give away your IP for free, you'd let them pick your brain, you'd talk to them about all the things that you can do, and then you put in a proposal to actually implement it, right? That's most of what, most of the time, that's what we do. Oh, well, how will you do this? Oh yeah, we'll use that and we'll do this and we'll set up this and we'll measure it with that and we'll put that in Google Analytics and then we'll report to you on a weekly basis and then we'll have a bi-weekly meeting and then blah de blah de blah de blah, blah right? Thank you, Tamika. And then they say, great, can you send us a proposal for that? And you go, yeah, no worries. And you go back to the office and you get out your proposal template, which is probably mine, and you fill it in and you send it off. And they go, oh my God, I'm not paying you $5,000 to do that. You're insane. And you never hear from them again. And that's usually what happens. What I'm suggesting is that you get paid from the moment you start talking to the client. You get paid for your strategy and your consulting and your intellectual property, right? And if you package that up into a signature system that is unique, to the way you do things, they can't get it anywhere else. If you want the Mavericks model installed in your business, you have to join the Mavericks Club. It's the only way you can get it. If you want the WP Elevation Blueprint installed in your business, you have to join WP Elevation. It's the only way you can get it. So what I'm suggesting here, uh, Charmaine, is you still produce things but the value is in the consulting and the IP, and that's where you get paid the most, because that's the most valuable part of it. And the production is standardized in a way that it becomes profitable, and you get off the production tools and more into the consulting and the IP. Right, Andy Winderbank, I'm just starting out. How can I make use of this advice? Andy, what a fantastic question. And let me tell you something, my friend. If I was just starting out now, the things that I would do differently. My suggestion is this, try and get your signature system dialed in as quickly as possible because you can either sell $3,000 projects now and in three years time try and pivot to a $3,000 a month signature system or you can just start trying to sell a $3,000 signature system right now. Either way, it's gonna require work to make that shift. Why not do it now rather than have three years of low profit, high stress, on the treadmill, feast and famine, why not just make the shift in your mind now? Now it's gonna take work. I'm not suggesting it's easy, right? It's gonna take work. You can either do it yourself or you can work with us and we can help you. Um, the, you know, we, 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 typically when we start out, we start out at the low end of town and then we try and walk up to the Paris end of town and get paid higher fees. It's a long walk. Why don't you just start at the Paris end of town? 
Here's the caveat. You do need a couple of things. One, you need to actually be able to get results for your clients. And two, you need a really good case study that proves it, okay? So that's the first thing you do. Figure out your process for, uh, and, and you know, if you just Google signature system, right? You, there's a whole bunch of, there's a, there's a great website in Australia called Smallville. They've got a bunch of articles on signature system. Google signature system, start playing with some ideas put together a process that you know actually gets results for clients, and then get some social proof, get a case study. Um, Trisha Cooper says, can I say I've really missed seeing you on video, Troy? Thank you, Trisha. Can I say I've really missed being on video and it's good to be back? All right, do you have training for solo people starting out? Roger Matthews, yes. Get on over to wpelevation.com and check out our suite of online courses, uh, or stick around because Next week, I'm going to be revealing some details about a brand new training that we've got coming out, 100% uh, focused on helping you getting your first or your next five clients. Uh, now, here we go. Let me just um, come back to some questions here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Kyle says, I still have some building to do before I can join the Mavericks Club. Kyle, very common um, response that we get. My answer is this, you probably do have some building that you need to do. I promise you do because the business is never finished. You can continue to build that on your own and then join Mavericks, or you can do what a lot of people have done, which is join Mavericks and just build it a lot quicker. And I know that sounds like a cheesy response, but it just happens to be the truth. One of our members, Jason Garcia, uh, had made a decision to quit his job in May. He joined Mavericks Club in January. He didn't have a business. He was still working a full-time job. He flew out to San Diego in February to come to our live event. He then since quit his job in May, in the middle of a global pandemic with the highest unemployment rates in the history of mankind, he quit his job. And his boss said, you're a lunatic. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm going to do my own thing. And I have a great support network and a great team of coaches and peers to help me. So I hear you. Yep, you can, you can, you've probably got some work to do. Uh, joining Mavericks is just going to help you get there quicker. Anyway, this is not a pitch for Mavericks. I'm, I'm sorry it's been kind of uh, um, hijacked. Uh, Hel Helena Denley, Warren would like to know where you get clients that will pay $1,500 a month ongoing. Where would you like to start, Helena? So uh, there are, uh, we've had clients pick up retainer client. We've had customers and students pick up retainer clients on Tinder. True story. There are so many opportunities to pick up $1,500 a month retainer clients. Finding the clients is not the problem. Having a great offer and a signature system and being able to present it and the choreography around how to present it, that's actually the, the real work that needs to be done. I think the biggest opportunity right now for finding clients is in Facebook groups. That's where we're finding all of our clients. Uh, but there are limitless opportunities for finding clients. Finding clients is, finding clients makes an assumption that they're hiding from you, and they're not. They're just waiting to be served. There's a tweetable. Clients are not hiding from you. They're waiting to be served. Uh, here we go. A couple of other questions here. George Butterfield says, this is a long one, so I'll bring it up on the screen. Georgia says, Troy, what did you do to move from project work to the next step, to the next step, to the signature system? In other words, if we're not quite ready for Mavericks Club right now, what steps would we take to move successfully in that direction? Georgia, you know the answer to this question is going to be to join Mavericks Club because the quickest way to get ready for Mavericks Club is to join Mavericks Club. Anyway, um, make a decision. Go through the spreadsheet, punch in the numbers, make a decision that you are done with project work and you are now only working on a monthly retainer. It's just a decision and then have lots of conversations to validate your idea with customers and to craft your messaging. That's what it comes down to. You and I both know that you can deliver results for clients. We know that. You know that. You've been doing this long enough, right? We know that you can deliver results for clients. You're doing yourself and your clients a massive disservice by selling them a project for $5,000 versus selling them a signature system for $1,500 a month. Sell it for $1,500 a month if that's what you want to do. That's better for you and them than selling them a $5,000 website or a $5,000 whatever the project is, right? You know that you can get results for clients. It's just a decision about how you sell it. That's all it is. Uh, Tamika says, awesome, and congrats on the new one. Thank you very much, uh, Tamika. I really appreciate that. Um, Charmaine says, 
okay, I trust you. I'm still executing the WP Elevation model. I'm ready for the next one. Woohoo, Charmaine, I can't wait to have a conversation with you. Uh, when I get off uh, here, I will reach out to you and we'll schedule a call and jump on and see if Mavericks is a good fit for you. Uh, come on, where will the sheet download be found? Uh, if you just put sheet into the comments, then we will ping you on Facebook Messenger and we will send you the spreadsheet on Facebook Messenger. Um, bum, 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 bum. All right, Luke Bragg, great question. When you start at the top, how do you get effective social proof with no underlying customers? Luke, here is my suggestion. Find a school or a university or an education institute, which by the way, they are all absolutely screaming for digital help right now, or find a yoga class or find a Pilates studio who are all screaming for digital help right now and do it for them at cost. Don't do it for free, do it for them at cost and say, listen, this would normally be a $1,500 a month thing, right? But I wanna do something for you guys because I believe in what you're doing. Here's the thing, I also wanna write a press release about this, get you guys a ton of PR, but also get me a ton of PR for doing some good in the community, right? That's how you get social proof when you don't have any. Uh, friends of mine, uh, uh, Robert and Dorit from um, Astroff Consulting in Canada, they're trying to get social proof for a new signature system at the moment. So what are they doing? They're running a bunch of free webinars with their partners, with other organizations who, they're, they're in the business of helping high school students go through university admissions in North America. So they've got a bunch of summer camps that have just been canceled. Those summer camps are running webinars and Zoom calls for their camp counselors. And Robert and Dorit are jumping on to add a ton of value be super helpful for free as a way of collecting testimonials and logos to say, hey, we have now been featured on blah, 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 blah. Uh, here we go. Yes, Sharon Yates, I've been working on my pivot for a few months now. It is so exciting to help people with their projects. Love it, Sharon. Love, uh, love your positivity here. Uh, Ron Pearson says, uh, what, where do I see Messenger? Haven't used it before. Okay, Ron, well, you need to sign up for Messenger. Just go to Facebook dot com uh, and search for messenger and then um, uh, sign up for a messenger account. It'll just use your Facebook account details. In fact, you can sign up for messenger without Facebook. Excuse me, I'm gonna cough. Into the elbow, COVID style. Um, uh, here we go, uh, Bogdan Mania says, so this is the high ticket approach, here we go. Great question here. So this is the high ticket approach. I wonder how you would sell this to the regular client here who expects to pay 250 to 350 for a WordPress theme from ThemeForest, adapt it in four days and eventually produce the content as well. Bogdan, you don't. They're the wrong client. You don't sell it to them. You say bye-bye to them. You develop this signature system. You find better clients with real budgets who value your work and you say bye-bye to those clients. It takes time, but it's totally doable. I have got Literally, I could stand here for weeks and just bring people on the screen that, 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 who have done that, who have said bye-bye to low-value clients and who are now working with high-value clients. Deborah, charging $1,500 a month for what? Great question, Deborah. What do you do? What do you deliver for clients? Let me give you an example. If you're a videographer, I'm not going to use the web design example here because I'm a bit bored with it, so I'll use, and just for the sake of making this applicable, if you're a videographer and you... Uh, shoot corporate videos. So, so I, this is a, a real example. You're a videographer, you shoot corporate videos for clients and the, your client calls you up every three months and says, hey, we've got this breakfast coming up. Uh, we need a, another uh, corporate video. We need you to come out and shoot the breakfast and edit it together and make it look fancy. Cool, now you could just do that. You could charge them two and a half grand, go along, shoot the video, deliver the video and you're done. Or you could start asking them questions about uh, um, why they're shooting the corporate video and what they're doing with the video and how they're using it as part of their business. And you could find out, you could uncover through a detailed conversation, you could uncover that there isn't, and this doesn't work all the time, but it does work with the right clients. You could uncover that they have a need for some ongoing social pack videos. So hey, we've, we've shot this corporate breakfast, how about we put together a social pack and we drip that out over your social media uh, uh, profiles and pages over the next couple of months to promote the next breakfast that you've got coming up. Is that a good idea? Oh, that's a great idea. We hadn't thought about that. Can you do that? Yeah, of course we can do that. It's part of our 
social pack signature system. Oh, what's included in that? Well, you get this and also this, and is that relevant? And would you like that? And now we're talking about a $1,500 a month retainer versus $2,500 every three months when they need you. So it's about being more proactive, identifying growth opportunities for your clients and packaging it up for them that makes it a no-brainer for them and gets them an ROI. If my clients get a great ROI for 15 to two grand a month, I feel good about that, exactly. So $450 for a sales page is not the type of client we need right now. Nope. If it's a transactional, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm just at a place in my life where, you know, I'm, this might sound arrogant, but I wouldn't get out of bed for 450 bucks to do anything for anyone. I mean, what's the point? There's just nothing in that at all. Tell them to go to Growth Geeks and get it done for 300 bucks. There's nothing in that. There's no value in that, right? What is the value in that? I can't see the value in that. I want to have an ongoing relationship with my clients because I want to see them succeed. Here's the mindset for me. I really enjoy seeing my clients succeed because it makes me feel good about myself. If I wrote a sales page for someone for 450 bucks and then said goodbye, I would have no idea whether or not it was successful. I certainly wouldn't want them calling me in a week's time to ask me for more help if they've only paid me 450 bucks. So there's no relationship there. It's a transaction. I'm not a shop. I'm a consultant. I'm a coach. I'm invested in the success of my clients. I'm not a shop. That's just the, the mindset difference. Okay. Uh, hey, David Drucker, downloaded the sheet from Google Docs to Excel, and it's mainly ref in cells. Sorry, can't help you. I don't use Excel. I'm a Mac boy, and I love Google Sheets. Here's an idea. Just do it in Google Sheets. Um, sorry, man. Uh, can't do tech support. Um, Deborah, I hope that answered that question. Um, the, the sheet works in Google Docs. So yeah, just, I mean, just do it in Google Docs. Uh, Deborah says, I get it with your answer. I've start, I have started that. We'll expand. Yes. All right. Love it. Okay. I'm going to bounce out of here pretty soon because I want to go and have some toast and a coffee and give Goldie a cuddle. Uh, so any other questions? Let me just preview what's coming up tomorrow. We have a great case study tomorrow with my friends Adam Silverman. Turns out the man is an awesome drummer by the way, and has actually drummed on American Idol, I think, or America's Got Talent. I'm pretty sure it was America's Idol. I've seen a video of the man drumming on stage on America's on American Idol. Um, awesome drummer. Also happens to run an agency called Mule Town Digital uh, in the States. And Samantha Johnston, one of my dear friends from California, runs Neapolitan Creative. She's from Southern California. And these two are going to be on tomorrow talking about how they run their businesses without leaving the house. Samantha's got a couple of kids. Adam's got kids. He's converted the shed on his farm into an office. He's got some staff there. Yes, I'm back on the carb, Simon. Uh, just love toast. Can't get enough of the toast. And these two are going to be live on Facebook tomorrow talking about how they run their businesses from home. So stick around for that. By the way, the details tomorrow uh, at 10 o'clock Sydney time, Los Angeles 5 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon. And eight o'clock Wednesday night for those of you in New York. So, uh, anyone got any other questions? Um, Helena, do you have to start at that low price to get testimonials and work your way up? Well, you can, or you can just start at a higher price point and get testimonials and work your way up. Working your way up is just a mindset. Again, working your way up to what? Working your way up to what? Like, if you know that the value, if you know, like, by the way, I've paid $4,000 to have a sales page written, right? Four grand to have a sales page written. It made tens of thousands of dollars, that sales page. In fact, it made over $100,000. So is a sales page worth $450 or is it worth $4,000? It depends on who you're talking to. If you know that you can write a sales page that is worth $1,500 to a client, then why charge $450? You're just doing yourself a massive disservice. You're just making shit hard for yourself, right? And you probably won't like yourself very much as a result of it. So don't do it. Now, not all clients can pay you $1,500 for a sales page. That's fine. Say bye-bye to them. So I'm sorry, I can't help you. You've just saved yourself six hours from writing the sales page. You've now got six hours to go find a better client. Get into Facebook groups and do what my friend Dana Molstaff says. Become micro-famous in someone else's Facebook group. Yeah? I do this all the time. I live in Facebook groups. I just go and answer lots of questions and be super helpful. And now I'm in that position where I've been doing it long enough. Whenever I turn up in a Facebook group and answer questions, people are like, oh my God, Troy Dean's here. The real Troy Dean's here. And I say that humbly, right? I say that humbly, but that's what happens when you just do it long enough. 
Uh, come on, says $4,000 is a bargain. How are you justifying the $1,500 monthly retainer to a prospect who wants a one-shot WordPress website? Here we go. Same. How are you justifying? I'm not. The question is I'm not because if a prospect wants a one-shot WordPress website, I don't talk to them. I can't help them. And I free up my time and say, sorry, I don't do that. I'm not the droid you're looking for. Can't help you. Go somewhere else. Go to Upwork. Right? So I don't. I just don't justify it. I don't justify shit to anyone. They have to justify themselves to me to work with me. I'm not justifying myself to anyone because we have enough social proof. Our marketing is good. I don't need to justify it to people. It works. We have a process that works and we have social proof. So develop a process, test it with some clients. You might have to test it for free to begin with or at cost, right, to get some social proof. Yeah, Lisa Hewitt says, so true. I have seen those comments about the real Troy Dean. It's a thing, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to brag, but I turn up in a Facebook group because someone tags me and I turn up and I start answering questions and people go, oh my God, it's the real Troy Dean. He's here. He's made an appearance. So that's just what happens when you build up enough of a reputation. Okay, so uh, final uh, thing is, um, has this been helpful? Just drop a, uh, is, is this valuable? Has it been helpful? Like it, uh, please. Uh, tell me if this has been useful and also drop a yes in the comments if this has been helpful, if this has been useful, and if you are going to join us for the rest of the week. Mona has a great question. Do you charge a care plan on top of the signature system? No, Mona, because think of a care plan as, how do we think? Okay, think of a care plan as a coffee with someone and maybe a scone, or if it was me, it'd be a chocolate brownie. Think of the signature system as we're getting married, yeah? So when you get married, you just have lots of coffee with your partner and lots of chocolate brownies. So uh, I don't sell a care plan on top of the signature system. The signature system is the full Monty of the care plan. And they get lots more for the signature system than they do uh, in a care plan. I uh, hope that helps. Tiffany says, yes, never stop, Troy. You are awesome. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Wish I could see your face there, but we can't. You're the mystery, you're the mystery girl avatar. Uh, Justin Higgs uh, says, Justin Higgs says, yes, valuable and useful. Cheers, Troy. Thank you very much, Justin. I uh, appreciate that. Jason uh, Sylvester says, massively beneficial. Awesome. I was so nervous about this live stream because I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to make a spreadsheet like interesting? It's a spreadsheet. Uh, so I'm really glad that you guys have found this useful. And here we go. Uh, yes, Bob DeBolt says perspective readjustment. Boom, thank you very much. Tricia says, thanks, Troy. This is definitely what I need right now. I'll be a maverick one day. Damn straight you will. Damn straight you will be a maverick one day. You are one of our oldest customers. You will absolutely be a maverick one day, 100%. Thank you, Troy, says Helena Denley. Thank you, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be harsh on you, Helena. Please forgive me. Um, what happens if the unreal Troy Dean shows up? I don't have any imposters yet, apparently. Uh, when you do get an imposter, though, apparently that's what it means, that you've made it. That means you've made it. Simon Kelly has the most interesting question of the day. What does Troy Dean put on his toast? Dude, what else do you put on your toast except butter and wild blueberry jam? Organic, of course. Come on, my friend. Is there anything else? Maybe a bit of smashed av, not on the same piece. Smashed av, bit of salt, lemon juice, this piece, organic butter, Organic wild blueberry jam. Kyle Alexander says, this has been awesome, Troy. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'm glad it's been helpful. Uh, Georgia Butterfield says, yes, definitely joining in the rest of the week. Thank you, Troy. Thank you for being a part of it, Georgia. And uh, Tamika Simkin says, yes, very helpful. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Tamika. And Robert Mecklen says, thanks for turning up the heat. Hey, Robert Mecklen, that's what I'm here for. Um, Awesome, awesome, awesome. Do you sometimes sell initial engagement before retainer? Great question, Ben. Initial engagement is part of our signature system. So you buy the signature system, you get the initial engagement, and then you get our help implementing the plan that we've designed together. I uh, love the spreadsheets. Spreadsheets from yawn to yeah. Awesome, come on. Love it, my friend. Love it, love it, love it. Beautiful. All right, hey, thanks, gang. Uh, no Vegemite. Well, I'm trying to get Oscar onto the Vegemite right now and he keeps saying it's too salty. It's too salty. Uh, smashed avo, smashed avocado, Robert. You guys call it avocado in the States, don't you? Isn't that what you call avocado, smashed av? 
Smash dab. Awesome. Hey, uh, quick reminder, tomorrow morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, same time, same channel here on Facebook. Go and get notified uh, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock Australian Eastern. Uh, Pacific time is 5 p.m. Wednesday afternoon. Eastern American time is 8 p.m. Wednesday night. And uh, we'll be talking to Adam Silverman and Samantha Johnston about how they run their two businesses without leaving the house, both very uh, successfully too, by the way. Uh, we don't need to say that one. We've just seen that one. Give me a yes in the comments. No. Um, here we go. Andrew Ireland says, also need to become a maverick right after cleaning up my last bespoke client mess. A hard lesson for me. Yes, they'll do that. <laughs> All right. Hey, you guys have been great. Thanks very much for being a part of it. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.